This September, Team Dimension Data and Zwift are joining forces to create a unique cycling opportunity. Open to cyclists of all ages and abilities, the Team Dimension Data Zwift Academy is a world-class training program designed to make you a rider who will accomplish more than just personal fitness gains. For every 10 cyclists who graduate the academy, Zwift will donate a Quebec bike to help mobilize South African communities. The work that we do with Quebec, we can you know, change the lives of many different people and communities. And hopefully one day a child that starts on a Quebec bicycle ends up at the Tour de France. Zwift is an amazing platform to connect with fans and to ride with people around the world. And it takes indoor training to another level. Swift, it feels real. Like you, got, you do a climb, 20 minute climb, a 30 minute climb, it feels real. And that you can really relate that to racing. I always say it's, it's like the best thing since SRM. I think it's a lot of people that are really strong and maybe not have the chance to show how strong they are. The academy doesn't stop here. Top performing graduates under the age of 22 will be invited to compete for a contract with Team Dimension Data's U23 Continental Squad. This is a real opportunity for any under 23 rider from around the world to you know, come into our continental team to, to showcase their talent and to be a part of a you know, the national team circuits and the under 23 circuits and then potentially get into the world tours. I truly believe that Swift Academy is going to fill in a huge chunk of that journey from being a dreamer to the reality at the end. Zwift and Team Dimension Data challenge you to train today for a stronger, better tomorrow. Take action now and sign up at academy.swift.com. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nathan Garrett coming at you from Zwift Community Live with the KISS Europe race, part of the Zwift Academy races that are being done for the program. And we are just getting going with the A category race for the flat course out on Watopia. I believe it's going to be about four laps or so. We've got, I saw 327 riders showing up for this race today. Uh, at the start, when I first logged in, I think it's probably climbed over 350 since then. Absolutely amazing. So let's get right into the... Uh, right into the racing as the A's have gotten going. We will have avatars in the A's and the B category, and then we'll be jumping right on into the C and D category as we can toward the end of the race. So with 327 plus riders out there today, it's going to be a heavy competition. I know that I did see earlier today that innovation was going to be showing up in force. I'm also seeing the likes of Johan Grant. Bignaval is in there as well, who's been in for the wins as of recently we'll make sure to keep eyes on burton as well here who's been looking for a podium for a few weeks now i believe has been always in the hunt it's going to be the kind of race that's going to uh really come down to tactics though being on the watopia flat reverse you only see uh, climbing and as through the SEs here, as you do see them heading on through this series of punchy little climbs. Then they'll go ahead and take a right-hand turn onto the Watopia Flat Course uh, onto the Ocean Boulevard and uh, head on underneath the underwater tunnel and then head out of the underwater tunnel back toward the lap area. So on the Watopia flat course, it's definitely going to be very tactical, only at those places at which it goes uphill, or perhaps you could send a few off the front for attacks with some team tactics. Team tactics may be coming into play, I would believe, out on course today. We are live today on Zwift's Facebook, as well as on uh, our Zwift Community Live Twitch and our Mixer channel. If you would like to check out what it's like to be, uh, I believe we are going to have a co-stream over at Mixer's channel today with Mr. Daffod Williams. If you'd like to check out what our new feature is over there, you can go ahead and do so. Uh, Zwift Community Live has let everybody know over at Zwift's Facebook that you can ask questions or comments during the race today uh, and have them uh, show, up, show up in the broadcast actually live here. So go ahead, questions, comments, or who you're cheering for, 
or even send some pics of your Zwift setup, do go ahead and bring them right on in. We can go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. Just go ahead and make a comment over at Zwift's Facebook or tweet at us at Z Community Live, at Z Community Live, and that will give you the uh, ability to jump right on into the broadcast. And Liam Gross is helping us out right off the bat saying, do I see Ryan Beavis racing there? Most likely do. I do see him out there once in a while. So good to see Liam hanging out there saying, go UK. So we keep an eye out for, oh, there's probably a lot of UKs, uh, UK flags actually, usually in the Europe race actually. And very competitive at that. We do see Augustine, though, here with Innovation, the director sportif, the team leader over at Innovation, Kyle Augustine, originally from New Zealand, hanging out in the UK, I believe, today. That's where he's racing from, but you can see that Kiwi flag there on the right-hand side of the course. This is a massive multiplayer online training platform, and riders from all over the world right now are competing against each other in the Watopia world right now. We do see Tim Cartwright there, probably one of the favorites. I didn't see that he was signed up until just now. And so am I actually seeing, I do see Roe and King here uh, with uh, with our Beavis here, actually. So good. Um, that's uh, interesting. Riding for Roe and King. Maybe some information that I am not privy to here, if I could get a little bit of help from the chat. As uh, our Beavis is hammering away, it looks like, with Roe and Luke. Uh, is that... Uh, uh, it's an interesting tag there. Is that a new team in in game right now? So we'll see Weidman now here for Team Experimental right along with Groot. And it looks like he'd Grimshaw now. Metcalf and Adam Webb now up toward the front as well. Maybe be watching out for him. The flatter courses, I believe, are going to be in favor for Webb. We'll see if he can pull off a, another W today. It might have been a little while since he's grabbed a podium, though, as of recently we'll have to see if can if he can uh come back and maybe best the likes of Cartwright but Cartwright on a flatter course being a top time trialist out of the UK is gonna be one to watch out for I believe up toward the front if he does get away it will be very difficult to deal with that rider I'm trying to see if I can find him up toward the front of this race right now and uh now we do see the B riders though starting to populate the list up ahead and that's because they're actually at a spot on the course that does double back a little bit and so we do have the b riders out on course let's go ahead and see what's how that is shaping up you can watch the live results over at zwiftpower.com zwiftpower.com will have live results for you i'm going to go ahead and show you real quickly how you can go about doing that so that you can also join in the broadcast but at the same time make sure that you are able to follow up on all the statistics that are being uh, pushed over to ZwiftPower.com. This is ZwiftPower.com website. I go ahead and go down to the Kiss Europe race right here. There is a live tab in the upper right hand corner. This is where the uh, results will be. The race information can be found here. All of the rules, etc. So, and then you go ahead and click on live, and you can actually see populated here who is in the A category, B category, etc., and all their past results. If you click on their name, and as well as what their current 20 minute watt per kilogram has been throughout the race so we'll be using that it is tim cartwright up toward the front of the race right now as they just entered into ocean boulevard so in the b category though we do have i think the largest maybe the b and the c category but one of the largest amounts of riders we've seen in quite a while i think we haven't seen these kind of numbers since last winter and already some breaks are most definitely starting to form. I'm seeing that uh, Sam, is it, uh, Sam Bacon, I believe, here, a part of a chase group. Not sure which chase group it is here, but it's right along with Hoskins, Borstings. I'm clicking forward here, looking for the front end of this race. Tedeman's in there as well, out of the UK. Moving forward, we are seeing it looks like Cade now in no man's land, trying to bridge the gap between this group that is about eight seconds up with PJ from Race WBR 
Bakhtiar in there. Beiger's in there as well from Team Experimental coming out of the Netherlands now. Looking at Leverson and then K. D. Becker. Carlson from Innovation. I believe we have found the front of the main group at this point, or at least the middle of the main group. So many riders. I did see uh, some of the riders were so many having trouble getting out a little bit, get a little bit of trouble getting out of the start finish line, actually, um, right from the get go. So Ramirez here. Oh, now we've found the back end of the A's. Maybe we can get right back in with the B's here. Here we go. Colonel Crisp is there. I believe this will be the front end of the race. He usually does not get dropped off from the uh, front end of the race this early. So Colonel Crisp in there right along with uh, looks like H. Wood Iona. I believe that is there as well. Absalom. Absalom's in there, it looks like, uh, as well as Aristigi coming from Spain. A whole lot of riders, actually. Too many to name at the front front end of this race. We'll see if it does break apart though. Point of interest would be Ocean Boulevard climb out of Ocean Boulevard. Probably the next place that we will most likely see a couple of breaks out on course here. The, uh, going through the Essies, that series of punches climbs, they'll hit every time through the lab. Did break things up a little bit, but as I look over at ZipPower.com they are in this B category. About 3.4 kilometers in and there is at least... 100 riders, 150, 175, 100, oh my goodness. So it goes all the way out to 198. Uh, let's see here, subtract 57, and we're looking at over 120 riders, I believe it is, in the B category right now. So a huge race right now. A lot of riders that are showing up, I believe, are looking to complete their Zwift Academy uh, requirements here by jumping into this race. But back in the A race, we were talking about how tactical it'll be. We do see the Melty Man, popular rider as of recently from KRT, showing up to a lot of races in the KISS racing team here. Hammering away 4.1 watts per kilogram. He's got five seconds off the front. And and with that group chasing him down, it's going to be a difficult day to get away here. But Team HDR here with DSN now uh, making his way to the front. And it looks like Innovation also with C Orgel here trying to chase that down. Not giving up, giving away too much wiggle room. And 2.3, 4.3 watts per kilogram. I'm not sure that Melty Man is going to be getting away. It's a valiant effort, but I'm not sure that it's going to pay off too much. Jabber here coming out of France now. 3.6 at the front. All they got to do is keep that... Uh, keep that speed at a reasonable level at the front, and he will not go anywhere. He'll have to hold a solid 6 to 7 watts per kilogram to try and make anything of this attack. It's not going anywhere any just yet, and I'm not even sure that it's put any hurt into the legs for the rest of the peloton. They just kind of come in at a tempo level and bring them right back into the fold, so nobody's going anywhere just yet, but at the front here, we are seeing some riders starting to line up here. Pelosi now. Now we see an arrow power up coming from a rider into the, the Adam Webb there. That's Adam actually Webb, Webb with Anvik now following very closely uh, coming out of Norway. That is an arrow power-up actually. Power-ups are allowed in the KISS races. For those of you who might be unfamiliar, these are uh, power-ups that you gain every time that you go through a start-finish banner, a sprint banner, or a KOM banner. And so he had one on reserve here, Anvik, in order to try and get away from the pack. Cartwright trying to follow it up. Gren there as well. All the favorites now making their way to the front now. Dauphin Williams, Jay Scott there as well. Johan Grant, one of the favorites to win out there today, right along with another PTZ rider, Jay Scott there actually. Is that a recent announcement maybe from PTZ? Jay Scott was riding around in that elite kit for quite a, while, quite a while. So I think Jay Scott's joining up with the PTZ boys now at this point, working along with Gren, trying to chase down Anvik. But Anvik immediately going away. 183 beats per minute right now out of Norway, absolutely demolishing this attack right now. But 183, how long can he hold Hold on to six watts per kilogram to try and gain an advantage over the group right now. Solo attacks out the front are very difficult to hold on to, especially on a flat course like this, just like in real life. Now, looking Barbosa here chasing that down. BRTs right along with M. Wall. Jay Lecoq has made this as well. Who is falling off, though, is the question. We are seeing Hargreaves in there. Oh, my goodness. Tom Hargreaves showing up, trying to absolutely decorate the field, as he would say here. And it looks like riding for ZHQ and NSS LRT. Good to see 
uh, Mr. Hargreaves, actually the man behind the men's side of the Zwift Academy, joining up with the Zwift Academy boys. So we'll go ahead and give him a ride on 171 beats per minute. And uh, we'll see if he can help to bring back Anvik and the likes of the rest at the front here. He has made the front group, actually. It looks like uh, six seconds, though, is the difference. Mekloff is hanging in there, and they're all being very tactical at this point. If anybody thought that this was going to stick, they would be uh, really smart to attack off the front at the same kind of effort that Andrik put down to try and get an immediate gap. Otherwise, the likes of uh, Mechlaf here are just going to slowly bring the entire group right back into the fold uh, with them. So Andrik will be caught, and then everybody will... Uh, Grupo Compacto up again. It's going to be Grupo Compacto again at that point, and nobody uh, will be working too hard. Burton, though, maybe not wanting to see that happen now from the TFC team here in that yellow kit that they like to use. Looking over his shoulder here, you can see 7.4 watts per kilogram. Fleetwood's there as well, 5.6, and you do see Anvik now, 5.5, slowing it down a little bit. Burton there, not going much of anywhere, though, as it looks like Szerzynski out of Poland, as well as the rest of the group are able to just pull it right back into the fold, actually. So good to see a couple attacks here early on, but nothing going anywhere just yet. So we are seeing kind of a setup photo here coming from Mr. Jonathan Nomlet. Uh, good to see Johnny throwing out some tweets at us over at Z Community Live, giving us an example of how to make this happen. And uh, kind of a setup photo, getting ready to fly for the Go Zwift Kiss Road Race Aussie E-Crit Final for at Z Community Live broadcast. A lot of core <laughs> hashtag, a lot of work. Johnny Noblet is letting us know. Good to see that. Getting ready to fly to the Aussie e -Crit setting up over there for Z Community Live, Zwift Community Live, and Go Zwift. And so we're looking forward to that broadcast uh, next week. Uh, I believe it is Saturday, so make sure to tune in for that. And now we are seeing here, it looks like coaching company, I think, Luke and Roe, Danny King. Yeah, so, yeah, I was looking at that. I was assuming that's what it would be. Uh, we were um, we're really ex excited to see Luke, Roe, and Danny out on Zwift. I know they have been using the uh, they have been using the platform for sure, and uh, I looks like maybe forming a forming a team out on Zwift now. And uh, is there a price for three hundred Zwift races, Nathan? Uh, Tom Ov Kalen is saying I'm I'm not exactly sure what the price what 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 we're talking about. What are we getting at there, Tom? Let me know. Give me a little more context there. Is there a price for 300 Zwift races? I'm not sure what we're getting at, but uh, let me let me know more, a little bit more about the question there, and I'll uh, try and answer it to the best of my ability. Brother Alfonso is letting us know that uh, we are streaming at Z Community Live, so I believe Brother Alfonso is also streaming over on Mixer and maybe Twitch as well, or perhaps on Facebook. He does stream as well, so make sure to check out uh, Mr. Alfonso stream. Now we are seeing attack here going through the essays. It is going to be Webb and Cartwright. A couple of the favorites for sure to be watching out for today. And uh, braving it up against the pack dynamics here. Anvik is going as well again out of Norway here. Up in the 9 watts per kilogram. But it's at a very fast point out on course. He kicks it with that drafting power up. He's using that drafting power up through the group actually to try and gain a little advantage, but he didn't really accomplish much there except for bring the pack right on with him. You want to use moments out on course in which the pack is not going to just grab onto your draft and go right along with you. So what ended up happening there is he went ahead of the group a little bit, but not quite enough to gain enough room in order to not just bring his speed right back into the group. So now we are seeing Fleetwood here with the tall socks and the Zwift hat. Always looking fashionable out on course here, as you can see here, coming from Fleetwood. 167 beats per minute currently. Able to make this front group right now, it looks like, out on the flat course. Hargreaves still sitting in there. Jay Lecoq there as well. Jay Scott, it looks like. And then we do have Hassan, and then it will be 
B riding for Rowan Kig. Beavis is there as well as Barbosa from PTZ team coming out of Portugal. Heat is there from Sweden. Super international field right now. So cool to see. So many country flags on the right hand side of the course. I'm seeing France, USA, UK. Who are you rooting for out there? What country or what trade team out on Zwift? ZHQ is out there represented as well. And uh, prize, not price. Got it. So is there a prize for 300 Zwift races, Nathan? So who's got 300 Zwift races out there today? Is Tom Ovkalen the first to 300? I'd wonder if that's what he's uh, alluding to there or perhaps somebody else out on course there. I think there is somebody currently leading, according to ZwiftPower.com, most races out on Zwift. I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of the riders out here currently to day. It may be Tom himself actually as he has been in a lot of races out on Zwift. So we are seeing up toward the front now. Maybe a little bit of attack coming from Serzinski or just kind of leading things out making sure he's not being dropped off. Hinton there from Innovation also making his way to the front as we can see. Let's move back into the B category as they are coming into one of the points of interest out on course. We are seeing them starting to have a few attacks uh, through the SEs right now. Definitely one of the points of interest out on course where people can make something happen as there aren't a whole lot of them on the flatter course. A lot more tactics involved for sure. We are seeing Colonel Crisps from the WBR team, actually, the World Bicycle Relief Team. You can always recognize them with that red, white, and light blue kit, actually. There's also seeing uh, PJ from the WBR. We're seeing Davies, though, also from the Innovation Team. You can recognize them in that Alienware kit that they have adopted since Team Experimental went ahead and were able to get their own in game actually Bizer there from Team Experimental though is up toward the front from the Netherlands there see if we can grab a shot here from the WBR boys there we are 5.2 watts per kilogram a little bit of climb out of the SEs this last little kick is usually the place and where people are caught off guard not going much of anywhere just yet unless somebody can sneak off the front a lot of times just like in real life there is actually an arrow power up being thrown down by Briarly here now out of the UK or really excuse me if the pronunciation was incorrect there with that arrow power up may be causing a little bit of mayhem actually in this pack right now but there were quite a few thrown down on the back end of that climb and uh, up toward the front though, though we do see it is going to be the PTZ rider S light 182 beats per minute right now with Heimfarth and it looks like Vigo and Absalon nothing just yet able to get off the front we are seeing a little bit of mayhem at the back end of this group though Maybe Maybe a few unable to hang on. A lot of drafting power was being thrown down. I think those were being used right before the under uh, going under the banner, though. That's usually the way that the power ups are used that are not wanted. Is you go ahead and you use them prior to or at a spot where you're in a little bit of trouble, and then if you're looking for a new one as you come through the uh, sprint banner, a lot of times you'll use one to try and get a double power up. Uh, maybe use back to back or at least grab one that you're looking for. The arrow power. -up being the strongest one, reducing the uh, drag on the avatars is usually the one that, especially on this course, without a whole lot of climbing, the feather power up for only 15 seconds is not going to do a whole lot of advantage. But that arrow power up on a flat course like this for 30 seconds, most definitely going to be the one that these riders are going to be looking for to try and gain an advantage over the rest of the group. And we have got a little bit of cheering going from Team TFC here. Good to see Team TFC tuning in to the broadcast. Podcast. They are out there in that yellow kit saying, our man, Matthew Burton, is racing in the KISS road race. Can he finally get his breakthrough win? Check if he can at Z Community Live. Thanks a lot, Team TFC, for the tweet. And uh, good to see you tuning in. We will be watching Matthew, looking for him to uh, grab that win or a podium. I do see him actually over entering, entering in the A race into Ocean Boulevard right now, actually. It does look like there was a little bit of split, actually, or at least a few riders right now uh, off the back a little bit, trying to find their place in this group, actually. One... Actually, 145 back to Bentley. The Hedgehog did get dropped off as well, actually. Envic up at the front here, right along with... It looks like the Melty Man actually attacking early on. Is that right? No, it's Cartwright. Excuse me. Cartwright from KRT. Favorite to win. Winner of the London uh, World Cup 
actually with uh, CVR World Cup, actually. Off the front, this boy is absolutely hammering right now. 6.8 watts per kilogram. It's got a solid three seconds, but at the front, we do have Boweski here now. Maybe only able to put out six watts per kilogram, but pulling the entire group right back up to Cartwright, perhaps. Cartwright, seeing that it's not going maybe anywhere, fades immediately into a 4.8. Now up into 5.3, 5.5. He's kind of measuring, it looks like, whether or not this is going to go anywhere, but I'm I'm not sure it's worth it at this point. At 4.4 watts per kilogram at the front, they don't have to put out too much of an effort. A lot of these riders will have 4.0 to 5.0 FTPs, so they can do that for a solid hour straight. And at 2.7 at the front and pulling them still back in, doesn't look like it's going to be going anywhere just yet. It was quite an effort, but not anywhere just yet. We are seeing Burley Alfonso saying, Team PTZ, Stuart Lynn, letting us know that actually... Uh, Mr. Stuart Lynn has 345 races out of Canada there uh, for Team PTZ. 345 races out on Zwift. Very cool to see. Very dedicated to the racing out on Zwift here. Cart right now with Serzinski pulling him right on back in, though, it looks like. Not going much of anywhere yet, but setting up, it looks like, at the front of the race here for the climb into, uh, or excuse me, the climb out of Ocean Boulevard. You do see they are above here. This is where they do climb out of the underground tunnel here and into the lap point. This is the finish of their second lap out here today. 8.2 watts per kilogram all the way off the front, actually. Already off the front, excuse me. And we are seeing Jay Scott from PTZ right along with Williams. This might have been the plan, actually, to force them to close it down and then grab the draft. There it comes Bring It All, actually bringing it from the Vikings team. Also going up the front, 187 beats per minute. We are seeing that and it looks like Johan Gren, very cagey rider, very smart rider, actually waits for the right moment to go all the time here. And it looks like Webb, though, 3.2 is hanging in. Pilkington is making it as well, has that sprint jersey, it looks like, with a solid effort. And 11.24 through the sprint banner. These are actually on the left-hand side of the course here. You can actually grab these uh, jerseys out on course. Uh, KOM, fastest lap, as well as the sprint. The only one that we're able to grab out there on the Watopia course right now during this event is the sprint jersey. Currently has the fastest in the uh, in the race right now. And I, I believe he might also have the fastest in game game right now signified right there next to his name you can hold on to those jerseys for one hour straight after accomplishing that achievement in game there will not be any data for the kom as they are not climbing the reverse or the forward kom we can see there's nothing for the epic kom that is the so every lap you will see this gigantic mountain off in the distance that is the watopia mountain you can climb that and try and grab the epic kom jersey as well as the volcano and the volcano koms this is for the the volcano lap and then the volcano KOM for those jerseys if you ever out there and want to try and see how you're doing against those who are also riding live we are seeing some cheering there go PJ Riley Hurt Locker, Fraser, Nathan, the Colonel, and Rich Noble, all WBRB racers. All right, Chris Radley, we will definitely keep an eye out for all of the WBR racers in the B race today. It sounds like it's going to be a tactical race, actually, in the B race between them with two laps to go. Let's go ahead and see who's still hanging in to the mix there at the uh, front end of the B race, actually, as he does uh, give us a little nudge to back go back on over to uh, that front group, huge front group here. We are seeing it looks like uh, the likes of quite a few race WBR. Noble is in there actually from race WBR right now. We are also seeing it looks like uh, Hurt Locker Hill is in there as well. I absolutely love the name there. And uh, killing it right now, it looks like at the front of the group. They have caught a few of the A's that were dropped off. It looks like Nathan's in there as well from the WBR. So a lot of WBR boys at the front end of the B race as Mr. Chris Ladley was letting us know. Steve Fung is saying that though Innovation has got this as well. We'll see if we can see. Quite a few Innovation boys have shown up as well. I have seen Orgel in there in the A race but I do believe we do have the likes of it is going to be Wilkes there from Innovation up toward the front in that alien wear 
other kit. Mason is there as well in that INC that you do see next to the name from the Innovation Boys. So things are still working themselves out at the front end of this B race. It might come down to a pack uh, sprint, actually, I would think amongst these boys, but it is going to be uh, Heimfarth here up at the front of the race, coming out of Germany, actually, on, it looks like an elite, if that if I'm not incorrect, is that an elite jersey right now that he is riding in, and uh, looking over his shoulder, though, now kicking a little bit at the front, is going to be Weidman actually being caught by these boys in this B category, it looks like he was dropped off, Christian Weidman not maybe having the best day out on the flat course today, usually able to make it in amongst the lead group group here but now looking here it is going to be light here making it uh up the climb one of the only climbs out on course three percent gradient as you can see uh heimfarth right along with aristegi and then it will be pj from the wbr team also able to make it as well so uh looking over at the broadcast at mixer we are getting a lot of comics here ian uh anderson good to see you hanging out at the uh broadcast he did race this morning if you ever want to check out ian anderson's uh am kiss races actually he does do a racer focus on tuesdays and thursdays usually for us so you can tune in for those broadcasts every Tuesday and Thursday morning uh, very consistently actually and uh, had a tough race this morning it looked like there were some solid riders showing up 5.0 plus watts per kilogram for the uh, A race this morning so Good to see you hanging out at the broadcast, though. A lot of chatter actually going on over at the Mixer channel, actually. Good to see you guys tuning in, as well as over at the Twitch channel. Good to see Szymanski hanging out over there, as well as Lynn uh, over there, as well. Nishido is over there, as well. Something to do with Row King Cycling Coaching Assume. Nishido says, yeah, just check their website. And Ryan Beavis is one of their coaches. Got it, Nishido. Thank you so much for the information. So Ryan Beavis, not only riding for... Rowan Kim, but actually working with them as one of their coaches, actually. And that's why the Rowan King is actually in the name over there at uh, the during for the A race today. And speaking of the A race, they are heading through the underwater tunnel, or not the underwater tunnel, but the uh, little underpass here after the sprint banner. Here is uh, Ryan Beavis up toward the front right now. It looks like Ryan for Rowan King there. Johan Graham with some attacks. And we're actually seeing a little bit of split, actually. I'm expecting a full on uh, group sprint to the finish at some point but earlier on in the race it looks like we are going to see a split and there is the first split i do see i believe it was a flag coming out of switzerland off the back there and a swedish flag as well moving our way back who is it going to be hargreaves playing it smart able to hang in and amongst the group there not getting decorated or ruined just yet now but from now out of sweden now trying to close it right on down we do see jacobson right along with pelosi and it looks like rosenquist now out of denmark able to close it down but Groot is off the back out of australia and it looks like uh williams able to hang in there as well vegan is in there it looks like uh moberly uh, and then it will be up toward the front innovation still with hinton my question is has mr augustine been able to make this front group because he does have a solid sprint but there are one two three four five six off the back here augustine is in there actually there is his name i ha i do see him able to make this front group still now tom hargreaves make sure you s set it just 300 watts okay hanging in keeping it steady don't go away from that steady effort it's got to just maybe even put it in er G mode 300 watts all day long on this and you'll make it to the you'll make it to the end of the climb keep it in check all right mr tom all right 182 beats per minute now right along with Straczynski. you won't ruin yourself at that point and uh enjoy the ride 300 watts all day long here so looking through here at uh the social media right now let's go team innovation raymond malik is letting us know go beavis full gas sean gross venner is saying Gren just had one race earlier today about three less than normal still will kick with 700 meters to the line tom o'kalen shots fired for sure over at the broadcast at, over at swift's facebook love the banner boys and girls keep it coming and uh innovation has some cheering them on as well we'll see if they can pull this off here a lot of swedish flags in there scr showing up in force it looks like as well up at the front here 
perhaps, or is there no SCR? Excuse me. That's just SCR in the name as it was not changed from yesterday. We did start covering the SCR races. So every Wednesday we will be here at noon CST. That is 6 p.m. BST, British Standard Time, if you would like to jump into the broadcast or those races. Uh, the SR, SCR races put together by the SCR team. A solid series of races, a point series actually. Uh, every Wednesday, if you'd like to jump in that point series, still have a chance to do so actually as I believe it will be the best of races so uh, a a certain number of them so go ahead and jump into there and I believe they do have a sponsor that's shipping to Sweden only actually though for some giveaways so uh, if you are in Sweden you can jump into those races with a little more motivation to do them and uh, grab some prizes actually perhaps if you do get lucky enough to win Johnny Rocket from the KRT team up toward the front here now 2.2 watts per kilogram, 661 beats per minute, not going much of anywhere just yet. Grupo Compacto here right along with Bring the Vault. And this has definitely turned into a proper road race out here today with the current group dynamics here. Nobody able to get away. We've seen a few off the front here. Some of the favorites have tried to make something happen. Maybe as they go through these D category riders, they may use some of the lap traffic to cause a little bit of mayhem at this point. We are seeing KP from Race WBR up the front coming out of Belgium right now. Solid effort here, and it looks like not able to make anything happen as they make their way through these boys, or maybe not even looking to make anything happen. Melty Man, 131, certainly Grupo Compacto at this point. So let's go ahead on over to the B category, see if anything's happening over there. We do see them heading on through the, it looks like, sprint banner right now. Nothing Heating up just yet over there as well. Still, Grupo Compacto here with Barista here from Z Sun. Looks like Thomas there as well. Johansson up toward the front, 172 beats per minute. Definitely some high heart rates, though. That's for sure. And that's the, the likes of Zwift Racing. Zwift Racing always has that consistency of pedal stroke, consistency of pedal power all the way through, and you get some of the best workouts because of it. You're never letting off the pedals. I, I you know, the uh, there is the road racing factor of the drafting and the sitting in, but even uh, sitting in in the draft, I almost li- liken it to being at the front end of a mountain bike race because in mountain biking, it's always go, 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 go. There isn't usually any time where you're backing off uh, too much. You do find yourself into a tempo pace at times and then attacks, tempo pace and then attacks at the front end of a race. Uh, If you do get dropped off from the front end of the race, it's nothing but just all out suffering all the way to the finish line uh, for uh, the for a mountain bike race. So I, I do uh, I do think it is a little bit more similar to that type of effort. But the tactics, though, definitely more like road racing. It's a definite mix and a, and a type of racing in and of itself, actually. Now, Cartwright Williams, and it looks like the Melty Man with a coordinated effort from KRT here, trying to heat things up at the front here. And these three get off the front. They were definitely communicating. And we do see Williams down to 1.0 watts per kilogram. Not going to see the likes of them again, most likely. I think he's going with them and then trying to hold up the pack perhaps is what's going to happen down to 1.0 watts per kilogram full on blow up maybe from Williams trying to go with these boys now Cartwright though trying to hang on to the Melty Man Melty Man is going to be pulled back in and they're going to try and work together now these guys go off the front together now and this may be the attack that we're looking for out there today Melty Man 5.4 watts per kilogram Cartwright resting it up now Five seconds now. Five seconds is enough to work with here. Team HDR with Hassan now. 4.3 at the front, though. But with, it looks like, enough breathing room to work with, we're going to have to see some boys at the front of this pack start to work together. Innovation making their way to the front. It looks like as well as it is going to be one of the WBR boys. Now it is going to be Hargreaves making his way to the front as well from Zwift HQ. Then it is going to be Vegan Morberly. They're starting to think about it are we going to work together here and pull these boys back in who's going to make the effort and it looks did they actually pull them back in immediately uh okay so right back into the group right now at this point and out on this course nobody going anywhere just yet or are they out the front excuse me no it's actually a little bit of out of sight out of mind excuse me i'm making a mistake here actually and it's the lap traffic that has caused them to no longer see the riders actually and they are going away now at this point and now we are seeing the orange numbers being thrown down and if they're going to close it down 
have to do it right now. Adam Webb kicking it into 12 watts per kilogram, knowing that this is a moment of truth for them. Burton trying to go right along with them, but the Melting Man and Cartwright have some breathing room to work with. They're going to have to kick still 6 plus watts per kilogram at this moment right now if they're going to hold on to this gap that they've got right now. We're seeing Cartwright kicking again. 5.5 watts per kilogram, encouraging on the likes of his teammate there, the Melting Man. Now, we are seeing Bring It All now at 4.6 watts per kilogram, 30 miles per hour. The speed is what we want to look at. It's not always the watts per kilogram because the groups travel faster out on course than the individuals. We're seeing 28 miles per hour coming here from Cartwright now and Vic now. 27 miles per hour, so not quite able to bring him back in now. But with those attacks, were they able to break things up at all at the back of this group? Let's go ahead and look down from the helicopter view. That'll give us an idea if anybody's falling off the back now. We are seeing Hargreaves actually for Zift HQ suffering at this point, getting absolutely ruined, we'll see, and decorated out there, out on course. 300 watts. Let's go Hargreaves all day long. Just keep it consistent and pull them back in right now. Muller, and it looks like Gertie now as well. Not sure if they're going to be able to get back with these boys if they're starting to walk away. These may be the next ones to bite the dust. Looks like Beavis here as well from the Rolling King off the back. 171. Then we've got Greg. Greg V. Bridge. Belty Man is saying at the front. I think that's what it looks like to type at 180 beats per minute. Asking for somebody to bridge up to them and work together with them at this point. They're looking for just a little bit more in this pack right now to try and make it happen. 5.8 watts per kilogram coming from Cartwright at the front looking for somebody to bridge. Looking Johan, maybe looking for Johan to bridge on up. 6.7 watts per kilogram. 8 watts per kilogram trying to go right now. All the heart rates right on up into uh, nothing. No heart rate coming from Grimshaw there, but 176 from Pelosi right along with Vegan. 167. Jay Scott, 176. Hargreaves there right into 172. To, keeping the consistency there right along with 151 from Augustine and still Grupo Compacto, Cartwright and Melty Man tried to make something happen Melty Man going again as they kick into the climb into the Essies maybe another chance at this point as you know a lot of the riders are going to be on the rivet right now just trying to hang on they may be able to at least whittle this down to a smaller group and work together for these last lap, this last lap out on course today, one to go one to go for the bell lap today i believe it is let's just double check and make sure nathan's got that right as i don't seem to know how to count and they are on it looks like 31.3 in the three down three down with one to go i believe it's going to be a total of 41k i believe out there today 41k out there today and uh with three down and one to go three down and one to go out there today bell lap today boys and girls can they pull it back in or get away is the question uh, out there as we do see Serzinski 174 beats per minute we do have a few falling off the back with Moeller and Gurney not going to see the front end again but that's not many to be dropping off with the amount of effort that they've had to put in at this point and we see Cartwright right along with the Melty Man making their way to the back of this pack, looking for the drafts. Now, will we have any counters? And Vic now seeing that maybe after sitting in, there might be a little bit of a window to work with here as a few may be in some hurt right now. But nope, not going anywhere just yet. Rosenquist is there as well. It looks like Team HDR up toward the front, but the Essies are not being used for that advantage as they make their way through this section back into the sprint banner. A few may be looking for a few more of those power-ups to try and gain an advantage over the competition. So far throughout the day here, we've seen a solid, oh my goodness, Metcalf has put out 5.2 watts per kilogram for the duration of 20 minutes during this effort. Cartwright's put out 5.0 watts per kilogram for 20 minutes today. So there's definitely been some serious efforts out there. Some uh, killer, killer uh, power numbers put out on this flat course. It's not like they're just hanging out, but it's just so difficult to get away from a group out on a course like this today. We are seeing for the past results, Jay Scott actually out there for PTZ, a recent PTZ member at, it looks like, 56 races out on Zwift. And it does look like he was able to grab a W, actually, in the KISS Europe race. Uh, was that, it looks like, on the 12th, actually. Was that just two days ago? Did he actually win the KISS Europe race? I thought that perhaps that was another rider, but it looks like it was uh, Mr. Jed Scott, followed by Joan Gravdal, and then Brandy Meltentalo, actually, in 
opinion that Jed Scott's solid ride from PTZ, Joan Gravidal Oxwell was able to grab it at 4.5 watts per kilogram or so for that race out on Box Hill for the London Loop, actually. I believe there was maybe a couple of riders that did get a uh, DQ or a relegation for over 5 watts per kilogram for 20 minutes. And uh, ZwiftPower.com, actually, because those are going into domestic to uh, international pro type numbers, they just do a double check and they're like, okay, if you can produce 5 watts per kilogram or more, please go ahead uh, for your functional threshold power. Please go ahead and send us a strain gauge power meter file from real life uh, from an outdoor ride is what they're looking for usually. And if you send that on over, uh, then you get the clearance that, hey, okay, this is a real effort. But uh, a lot of times, just like Zwift does as well, there'll be a flag over a name if you put out too much effort. Uh, not, not if you put out too much effort, but if you put out too much power out on Zwift in the numbers that look like maybe your trainer setup is a little bit off at this moment or you should maybe look into getting an international pro contract. The numbers that Zwift will tag at are usually around a UCI uh, elite world tour lover uh, level of racing or even above sometimes for getting those flags out on Zwift. Though. So that's perhaps why we're seeing that difference over at ZwiftPower.com with Jed Scott taking the win actually two days ago. But now we're waiting for the last half lap here. What's going to happen? Grimshaw is up at the front, but he cannot win the race today because it is compulsory in the A category to be wearing a heart rate monitor. So this is a great workout that he's getting, killing it right now, but without the heart rate monitor on, uh, he will have to uh, contact ZwiftPower.com and see if he can get his uh, result reinstated. But you have to wear a heart rate monitor at the front end of the A races in order to just make sure that uh, you're not just hanging out at 110 beats per minute with a setup. But we are seeing Cartwright trying to go again. Kicks off the front. He's got two seconds. He waits for a moment and looks to kick one more time. We are seeing 5.4 watts per kilogram coming from him. Pelosi is there around the corner on these on these uh, on these races here. Can almost use it like a crit race. We use the corner to gain a little bit of advantage because it does actually treat those corners a little bit like a handling skill if you kick it into them. And as you did see, Cartwright did, did gain about two seconds, but it didn't go much of anywhere just yet. It's looking to come down to a sprint up and over the top. But the type of sprint that this is, it's going to happen up and over the top of the underground tunnel, actually. As soon as you hit that underground water tunnel and you hit that 3% gradient from there to the finish line essentially it's an all out effort trying to find a wheel and then one last kick when you're already up and over threshold actually it's a wind up type effort this is actually one of the most dreaded sprints that I can be a part of because you know that you are not going to have to just throw down that 200 meter or 500 meter effort or so sit in sit in bkg look for that effort give a little kicks to find that front wheel and then give that last kick instead it ends up being like the 1k you end up like just going from you know 1k out essentially or a little less than that with a climb full on five six seven a thousand watts whatever you can to hang out the front and then you got to hang on to any kind of groups that are starting to form then you have these then you have these uh, groups form and splits and then you're either trying to chase or hold on to your split at that point because you don't got, want those people to come back so it ends up being a drag race it's a long drown uh, dragged out sprint actually and it, it's a, a very 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 difficult sprint to win actually so it always is very exciting right at the end of this flat course because it tends to come down to so many riders that might have that kind of match to burn to go from way out so it tends to favor a rider that can just drag race to the line and kind of be tactical enough though to not waste too many matches and have two or three matches to burn not a single kick rider but a rider that might have two to three kicks in succession of each other we'll see who might have that my guess is that adam webb gren maybe as well cartwright might be able to pull this off as well but johnny rocket here maybe not wanting to be a sprint finish using some of the lap traffic to find a little bit of breathing room johnny rocket here krt team now Kicking out of the U.S. of A, we are seeing Vegan here, uh, Mulberly now out of New Zealand going right along with them. Has a little breathing room. They let these boys go. At this point, the question is, do you chase it down or do you sit in? 
because you know the sprint is coming at this point. So they might be using some of those mental tactics, some of those uh, tactics, knowing that nobody's going to want to put out too much effort at this point. So if you just throw your chips at the table, six watts per kilogram off the front, all the way, you might not be chased down. But it looks like Pelosi, Johnny Rocket, and it looks like the rest of them are brought right back into the fold. We might see a couple more like that. Maybe on this downhill, we could see an arrow power up being blown at this point and trying to get away if you do not want that sprint effort. If you know you do not have those kicks over and over again, maybe getting away at this point, but you've got to gain quite a bit of time if you're going to stay away from 10 watts per kilogram out of that 3% gradient. What's the, there are so many riders at this point. Uh, we're seeing in this front group, at least 20 plus riders still in and amongst the mix right now. So who do you think it's going to be? You can head on over to ZwiftPower.com right now. See who's in the lead group right now. We got Johnny Roddick, Vegan, Hassan, Jacobson coming out of Sweden, KP from Race WBR coming out of Belgium, Super International Field, Barbosa's in there, Hinton from Innovation, Metcalf is in there from, or Nellis, Augustine, Grimshaw, Adam Webb, right along with Wall, Rosenquist is in there. We're seeing Serzinski, Pelosi, Johan Gren as well as Anvik, it uh, looks like Urs Geisen out of Netherlands maybe going to be a wild card. We've not seen racing in quite a while as well. Bring the ball, Cartwright Fleetwood is in there, I believe. So lots of riders. The Melty Man still, along with Gurney, I think has been dropped off 37 seconds last time. Jay Scott, watch out for these riders. Burn from the TFC as well. So who do you think it's going to be? I'm assuming we're going we're gonna to see a lot of cheering on for everybody's teams out on Zwift for this finish here today. Pelosi up the front out of Italy, right along with the BRT rider M1 wall riding for the bolt racing team we're seeing raymond here saying go vegan alibi is out there as well uh cheering on 5.5 watts per kilogram is what he's cheering on today man that, dra that draft not changed since october alibi is coming with a little bit of feedback there team pts is stronger than ever watch out gravda hanging out in the broadcast uh took a podium actually back on tuesday so he's rooting on his team we are seeing Gren here going from way out maybe Maybe not wanting it to be a sprint finish. And the Melting Man right along with Johnny Rocket now going to the front, but not getting anywhere just yet, but setting up maybe correctly for the right kind of sprint out of this 3% gradient out of the underwater tunnel at this point. The Melting Man, Gren, Johnny Rocket, Vegans there as well. Innovation all lined up at the front. Who's at the back here? Maybe out of position. Rosenquist, Pelosi, we are seeing. But they may get a huge amount of advantage being right around the middle of this pack. The main thing though is being toward the front when you hit the top of the climb. So timing it just right so that you get enough draft through this climb. And here we go, boys and girls. This is for the win here out here today. And Cartwright's the first to go right along with Gren. 8.4 watts per kilogram, 164 beats per minute. He's got about 10 to 12 beats to work with. We're seeing he does beat in the 180s. We are seeing that feather power up being... Uh, thrown down out on course right now pushing them into 9 watts per kilogram going right along with it will be Jacobson J. Scott Webb's there as well the Melty Man chasing it down we are seeing Johan Gren still able to make it but now THDR falling off we are seeing Hargreaves playing it smart maybe just following Orson and it looks like Augustine as well but way up at the front we are seeing it is Cartwright still going 9 watts per kilogram Brady Ball is going with him as well the Viking Man using that drafting power up maybe the one time that we've seen a drafting power up be one of the most strong the strongest power ups out on course because usually it's not a huge advantage but Webb goes right along with them they've got a gap now but can they hold on to it innovation now with the lead out man trying to make it happen with Hinton now but now Gren going to 10 watts per kilogram is it too little too late because Webb bring the ball and Cartwright are off the front now now is that moment we were talking about are they going to rest they've already thrown down a huge effort and now Gren chasing them down and it's going to come down to the this last couple of meters. Scott now trying to chase it down as well. Curly is there as well in this group, but off the front still, it's going to be bring the ball right along with Cartwright. Now here goes Gren with that arrow power up, but innovation now out of nowhere with Hinton, but Gren still the effort is gigantic. It's huge here, boys and girls, with Gren 11 watts per kilogram, but Anvik out of nowhere with the upset. It's going to be the Norwegian man with the W 190 beats per minutes perfectly timed power up with that effort and victor out of norway 
riding. Uh, first time I've seen this rider, actually, I think in quite a while. Takes the upset, actually. Cartwright, we thought was going to do it, but Norway pulls it off with the upset over Johan Gren, who I think hasn't lost a race in quite a while. Who is Anvik? Anvik with a crazy effort there. Let's go ahead and head over to the B category as it heats up out of the Ocean Boulevard, but we definitely want to check out who these past was what these past results are coming from the man out of Norway there. What an effort there coming from him. Grabs a W today, and it looks like no races I'm seeing from this rider, actually. Not too many. Took a third in the team at Italy, Specialized Zima. Won the WBR four lap. Won the Kiss Americas, actually. It looks like 100K race back on Sunday. Amazing effort here coming from Simon Anvik. So is this a ZA rider? My question is, is this rider U23 is my other question. I'm not seeing anything from him as far as age goes or anything. Need him to register over at ZwiftPower.com. We do have past races from him, but not a whole lot. So the wild card shows up and just throws down and lets us know that he is a force to be reckoned with. We're talking about some of the strongest riders we've ever seen out on Zwift here. So definitely want to see where uh, Simon is coming from. And definitely if he's a U23 rider, that's something that's definitely been super interesting with the races out here. Because as they start to show off who's who amongst the racers, and if they're U23, we can start getting an idea who these qualifiers might be as we get to the finish of the uh, Zwift Academy. There is still time to there is still time to sign up as we wait for the B riders to make their way to the line right now. Uh, if those of you who did not know, this race today is a part of the Zwift Academy. Eight workouts, five group rides. And two races for the two races that you need to complete the kiss. A lot of the kiss races are a part of that as well. So uh, a lot of riders, we had over 320, 330, I think racers uh, show up today. And a lot of those did have that little ZA badge badge next to their name, actually. And you do see it. And we are seeing it looks like Red of all right, or, uh, right along with Lewis and Barista here, as well as Beiser. Uh, Kira is there as well as Zavikas. Uh, it looks like, I believe, coming out of making a guess here. I believe that's Hungry Flag. Uh, and now we are seeing a lot of riders here in amongst this B group right now that are a part of the Zwift Academy, actually. Up to the front now, we are seeing F White now, right along with Aristegui out of Spain, it looks like, as they make their way to the same place out on course in this B category, looking for the W's. Large group, though. And it looks like it's going to be a di another difficult one to win. But we are seeing White going off the front here. 184 beats per minute. He's actually throwing all of his chips at the table right now and risking it all to try and get away with that arrow power up. Six watts per kilogram steady here. 183 beats per minute. Being chased down at the front of that group by, it looks like, Peckover and Heimfarth. It looks like quite a few, though, that are going to be able to keep him in the the fold, I believe. He would have to continue on at more than, I believe, 4.5 watts per kilogram to get away from the likes of this group. Only two seconds off the front at this point. The C category is also making their way to the line here. We will be able to catch the finish of that race, I believe. I believe we do have Herodine right along with Burgess at the front of that race right now. We'll just make sure that we've got them correct as soon as possible. There is so many racers signed up today. It is going to be Herodine as well as quite a few others. But now the B race is starting to heat up at the front. Now we do have Viger. This is the final K right here. And we're looking through. It is going to be a gap that's starting to form toward the front with Thomas, it looks like, as well as Innovation. Now all back together, though. Nobody able to really get away. They're going to leave it to the last, it looks like, few hundred meters right now. Dobbelstein out of Netherlands now leading it out. There's a little bit of lap traffic. It looks like they're getting in and amongst here. A few A racers that are being caught that are going to be a part of the sprint, but it's going to be Abelstein right along with Aristegui out of Spain. It looks like Rigoval from, or I believe it's Rigoval coming from Innovation. Race WBR toward the front as well. Uh, not sure which race WBR rider that is. We'll take a look as soon as they come around the corner here and it looks like it is going to be innovation with pain 
as well as the TKBE rider there uh, with... Man, they're jumping around so much. There's so many riders in and amongst this group here right now, and I have no clue who's going to win this race right now. Well, uh, it looks like Giljam up to the front with Innovation. Race WBR, it looks like with Nathan. I know he's got a solid sprint, but it's going to be Bijer now starting to open it up right along with Peckover. Peckover from the A race, so he's not actually a part of the uh, race that we're watching play out here, but he is going to be a part of how it plays out, though, as Calson's up at the front there. There it is from Innovation. A lot of Innovation boys saving the those arrow power-ups. Calson's got 11 watts per kilogram to give. Will Rigdeval be able to come across, though? Looking from the top view, it looks like it is going to just at the line. I'm not sure. I think Calson held it off. Fouled by Hurt Locker. So I believe Race W Bar was able to take third. I'm not sure if Calson held it off there. We'll have to wait for official results from ZwipPower.com. But I believe, well, innovation for sure at the front. Rigdeval might have nipped him right at the line. Followed up by the race WBR rider. Solid effort all around from those riders. Now in the C category, though, here it is for Harding, right along with Farzine, and then it's going to be as Burgess for WWZHR, Sass, Tigger, Pack. So that's a lot of different rides that he does out on Zwift, all in the name. A lot of times when you're a part of a group ride or a race, you put the name of that group ride or race into your name so everybody can follow along and know that you are a part of that race. It's uh, it was it was something you had to do a lot uh, early on, uh, but uh, you don't have to do it so much now. It is still appreciated, but uh, because of the calling effect of anybody else out on Zwift, you don't have to. Uh, it it's not required in order to only see those who are near you or get an idea of who is racing. It used to be open world. So you would just see everybody else. They wouldn't call any of the event. There was no event module. And we, and we actually didn't even start at the piers. It used to be that we would just show up at the start finish line. Everybody, everybody would have all of their computers synced with each other for timing. So there'd be like a, a clock from a website that everybody knew was the same time exactly. And they knew that we start at this time in game because text could lag. So you couldn't say go, go, go in game. So everybody would have be synced. They'd show up at the same start and then bam, it'd be go. And uh, Zwift Power would track whether or not you started correctly and stuff. It was, it was crazy. It used to be a, uh, uh, and then you'd see everybody else in the open world and so you had to look for who had kiss in their name or who had the the, the race in their name and get an idea of who was racing so uh way that that's it's it's uh, been so many advances in the world of zwift actually with the events now we have events we have category separation we have calling of categories if you want a whole so many different features for the events we have the peers they didn't even exist for the longest time so i mean uh just starting out on the trainers without having to show up at the same area uh, was a huge uh, step forward as well. So really, really cool. Ian Anderson says, makes me feel old. Great. Great riding boys. James Perrin is saying, Calson and Ritters, Steve Fung uh, saying over at the uh, over at Zwift's Facebook. Uh, Team TFC, not in the bunch, Matthew Burton is saying. So sorry to hear that, Matthew Burton, that he fell off. Uh, my money's on Colonel Cripps for the sprint, Chris Radley. It looks like for the WBR, Chris Radley, it was a solid effort all around for them, and uh, we are seeing that it was uh, gear. Rigdeval did nip Calson just barely at the line, it looked like. That last second 1,200, excuse me, um, 12 watts per kilogram was able to pull it off. Calson takes second, but Colin Hill, the colonel, takes uh, third place for the podium. Team X with Julian Beiser and followed by Ma Michael Mardoz uh, is going to be taking that fifth place on the podium for the B category. C category is still heating up here as we are seeing them make their way to the line. One of them is a Zwift Academy rider with D. Winter here out of Belgium. We'll go ahead and give him a ride on and it is mixed in with a few of the B category riders though as they make their way to those that spot that has been the main point of interest out on course. It looks like Harding coming out of Australia here early morning 
for him as uh, he rides along with Douglas Northcote, and it looks like Farazan, and then it will be Burgess, D. Winter, and then Lund out of Denmark, maybe playing it smart, 146 beats per minute. Uh, we are seeing De Winter 158 there, Douglas 159, and then Iman here uh, 180. Not sure he's going to have a whole lot to work with here to the finish line, though, as they make their way up and over the top here. Looking through, it looks like it is going to be uh, Hardy with 6 watts per kilogram. Douglas attacking there, 6.9 watts per kilogram right now. Burgess now 173 as he makes his way to the finish here in just a moment. We'll have to see uh, if they're able to uh, hold off the rest of the riders. 4.0 watts per kilogram. North coat, it looks like here, right along with Eamon. But it is going to be out the front. Douglas, they're going to let him go, though, as he's a part of the B category. He's not super interested, it looks like, Herodine, in making that chase. He does have six meters, though. There is no draft amount at this point. This isn't all an effort, actually. At the C category, 5.3 watts per kilogram, their FTP is going to be assumed between 2.5 and 3.2 watts per kilogram. So he is well over FTP at this point, 167 beats per minute, trying to hold off North Court. North Court closes it down right along with Ferris one. Looks like it's going to be the winter then sitting in still. One 167, Eamon, 185, Lund, still playing it smart at 155 beats per minute. Did have quite the rise in the heart rate, though, over the last couple of minutes. Will he be able to throw down a solid sprint with this smart play, though, or is he just hanging on for dear life at this point? We'll go ahead and give him a ride on. 7.5 watts per kilogram. De Winter going from way out here. 175 beats per minute. 750 watts, boys and girls. Here goes De Winter. There's an arrow power, but De Winter's got the kick to the the line it will be the winter it looks like today with Iman trying to close it down but 10 watts per kilogram all day long coming from this rider 193 coming from Iman solid effort here but the winter will be taking the win in the C category with 190 beats per minute three seconds back it will be Iman followed by North Coat in the B category so actually Farazan it will be yep it will be oh excuse me I believe maybe Herding did take that actually from the Farazon. So solid ride there for third place for Herding. But I believe then it was in the C category. Off the front there, uh, it looked like it was the winter who was able to take that effort to the line. I don't want to get it incorrect here. We're waiting for the update for ZwiftPower.com. If you haven't done so already, this, as we were saying earlier, this is a part of the Zwift Academy. And if you haven't done so, you'd still have a day to sign up. Last day to sign up for the program is September 15th. So head on over to academy.zwift.com for that uh to sign up for the academy. It is going to be eight workouts, five rides, and two races. The largest online training community is what we're shooting for there, as well as giving away one pro contract in the men and the women's uh, program. U23 only for Team Dimension data over there on the men's and on the women's. It will be Canyon Shram open to all of the women. Also coming up next Saturday, September 23rd, Rafa Clubhouse Mel in Melbourne, Australia. Head on over there if you are in the area for the Australian E-Crit Finals live event. They've been competing for week upon week upon week throughout the entirety of the um, the entirety of the Australian winter. So solid uh, efforts all around. The top ten have been decided, and uh, they will be competing over at the over at uh, the E-Crit Finals. So, Dimitri DeWinter takes the W, but gets an upgrade into the B category. Make sure that you go ahead and ride in the B category if you do see these upgrades. Head on over to ZwiftPower.com. Thomas Eamon as well, 3.3 watts per kilogram. We are seeing 3.9, 3.7, 3.9, 3.3. 3 .3. All of these riders, except for Fred. Isaac, nice job, Fred. 3.0 watts per kilogram, it looks like here, for that C category. So, these are all upgrades right here for those red numbers because in these categories if you're unfamiliar this is the categories out on Zwift for races and rides 4.0 watts per kilogram or higher is an A category rider 3.2 3.9 2.5 to 3.1 and then 0 to 2.4 for the D as you can see so functional threshold power what is your FTP in a race is a lot of times good way to figure that out or do an FTP test out on Zwift if you're part of Zwift Academy it is required a part of the workout so get that FTP test 
test, figure out what it is, and you can go ahead and jump into the correct race. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the results again real quick here. Here is the results today. Look at all these riders. I haven't had to scroll through like that since last winter, and we're not even into winter yet. We've already got 350 plus, it looks like. Simon Anvik takes the win, followed by Johan Grant, and then Damian Hassan for the top three. Next up, the Zwift HQ with Tom Har Hargreaves. Decorating the rest of the field, but off the podium there. Nice job to him. Andrew Hinton there, fifth place today. Looking through here for the B category will be Gear Rigdevold, followed by Nick Carlson, and then Colin Hill in the B category. In the C category, we're seeing a lot of upgrades. We'll call it as we see it. Dimitri DeWinter, Tim, Thomas Ewan, and then Tristan Harding, but it will be an official win, most likely, from Fred Isaac, and some upgrades there for the rest of those riders. Juan Joe Ferres, followed up by Jason Robinson. Nice job to the BRT riders out there today that's going to be it from me uh, coming from Zwift Community Live. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that follow button for all community live streaming here on ZCL over at our Facebook, Mixer, Twitch, or our YouTube channel. If you want our VODs, you can always find them over at our YouTube channel. It's all found at ZwiftCommunityLive.com. Com. We'll be back tomorrow for a Zwift Academy workout with Zuskana. She's been completing a lot of her workouts with the Zwift Academy live with us, actually, on Friday nights. She gets a ton of viewers, actually, over on our Mixer channel. You might want to join in over there. Uh, I think last week it was 300-plus hanging out uh, over at the Mixer channel, so make sure to head on over there. Uh, we may be doing some co-streaming, actually, with that, completing the workouts, actually. If anybody that is out there streaming a part of our streaming program at all you can actually probably get a co-stream with us going with ZCL over at the Mixer channel. If you'd like to complete a Zwift workout at the same time with Zuskana, I might jump in there as well. So make sure to jump in with us over at uh, ZCL places tomorrow for the Zuskana's ZA workout. If you don't know what uh, ZA is or what Zwift is, stick around for a couple of videos. That's going to be it from me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As always, great job to all the racers. Uh, solid, solid efforts. You guys, you guys are the testament to what an amazing platform Zwift is for training, getting an amazing workout in, creating the largest uh, training community online. So here's a little bit about what Zwift Community, Zwift uh, Academy is all about, and that largest community of train, online community is all about as well as what Zwift is and a few of the group rides that you can be a part of as well. Thanks for everybody for tuning in and ride on. This September, Team Dimension Data and Zwift are joining forces to create a unique cycling opportunity. Open to cyclists of all ages and abilities, the Team Dimension Data Zwift Academy is a world-class training program designed to make you a rider who will accomplish more than just personal fitness gains. For every 10 cyclists who graduate the academy, Zwift will donate a Quebec bike to help mobilize South African communities. The work that we do with Quebec, we can you know, change the lives of many different people and communities. And hopefully one day a child that starts on a Quebec bicycle ends up at the Tour de France. Zwift is an amazing platform to connect with fans and to ride with people around the world and takes indoor training to another level. Swift, it feels real. Like you got you do a climb, 20 minute climb, a 30 minute climb, it feels real and that you can really relate that to racing. I always say it's, it's like the best thing since SRM. I think it's a lot of people that are really strong and maybe not have the chance to show how strong they are. The Academy doesn't stop here. Top performing graduates under the age of 22 will be invited to compete for a contract with Team Dimension Data's U23 Continental Squad. And this is a real opportunity for any under 23 rider from around the world to you know, come into our Continental team to, to showcase their talent and to be a part of a you know, the national team circuits and the under 23 circuits and then potentially get into the world tours. I truly believe that Swift Academy is going to fill in a huge chunk of that journey from being a dreamer to the reality at the end. Zwift and Team Dimension Data challenge you to train today for a stronger, better tomorrow. Take action now and sign up at academy.zwift.com. Last year, Zwift Academy opened its doors launching a groundbreaking worldwide talent search to find the next pro rider for Canyon SRAM Racing. The competition exceeded all expectation. Over 1,200 women from 51 countries signed up to take the challenge in Zwift. In a truly grand finale, on the island of Majorca at Canyon SRAM's training camp, 
Leah Thorvalson of Little Rock, Arkansas, was crowned 2016 Zwift Academy champion and the newest member of Canyon SRAM Racing. This year, it could be you. Oh wow, I could have a shot at a pro contract, but it's for anyone. It's a huge step forward in your own fitness, and so it's, it's not all just about the one person who's gonna get a pro contract. It's a win for everyone who's involved. Zwift Academy is this great program where Zwift is trying to get the women more involved. It's just this huge, to me, a great community. There's women coming up going, I get how this could fit into my life. What I think is so nice about Swift Academy, I really think that it was um, inspiring lots of women to, to take part in this adventure. Maybe they've gone far beyond their own expectations. How far I got in Swift, um, there were 1,200 females that joined and um, there were 100 females that finished Swift and I can't believe I, I was one of them. Yes, it's hard. Come on, you can do it. You know, just do your best. Because it's not just the physical side, it's the determination and to boost your confidence in anything else you do, not just cycling. Find out how strong you really are. Find new friends from around the world. Find out if you have what it takes to go pro. Do not wait, just follow your dreams. Be the best cyclist you can be. Head over to academy.zwift.com to find out more and sign up today.